14th World Cup Finals kicked off last night in dramatic fashion. We look back on Argentina's defeat by Cameroon. We preview today's first game for the host Italy. What's the atmosphere like in Rome for tonight's clash with Austria? And what are the Austrians themselves? Is Tony Poles to the man to make the Italian stumble at the first hurdle? And with England's opening match just two days away, we talk live to the England captain, Brian Robson. Good afternoon. So, James, catching up on what's in the press? Yes, this actually is the Salman Rushdie Gazette from the Emirates <laughs> talking about the match last night, which, as you can see, Cameroon are too big a handful for Diego. Gotcha. Lovely. And, Great. And our referee... And friend. our referee is Clive. Now, this is the St and Greavesy mascot for the World Cup. For a booking offence, we just do that. <laughs> For a sending off, we go, ah! <laughs> and if it's a really diabolical decision, folks, we go, <laughs> like that, you see. And there's Clive. Uh, right. Clive is Welsh, of course. Of course. I don't know who after. <laughs> right. Well, so after the, all the months of anticipation, the first action of the 14th World Cup finals is behind us. Yesterday evening, the trophy holders Argentina, Maradona and all opened up against one of the outsiders, Cameron. A foregone conclusion? By no means. Well, here's a free kick to Cameroon. Up goes... A diabolical goal to lose, Jim, by the champions. Oh, not very happy goalkeeping. <laughs> but we've got to Start obviously there. talk about the refereeing yes. and the, refere the, the decisions that the referee took in the yes. game because we're talking about, about two sending off and four bookings. And four bookings, yeah. I, I thought overall, funny enough, Ian, it was a clean game. There were one or two dodgy moments in it. Here's one coming up. I have put it down a lot to the Cameroons not really being able to tackle properly. I think they... Uh, that, that was a little bit nasty, I must admit. Now, this is a first sending off, which I, I must say to Tim, I didn't think no, it was a sending off no, offence. No, it, it wasn't. It wasn't a sending off offence. They got tangled up. But he enjoyed it, didn't he? I mean, he quite enjoyed the adulation of the crowd. Well, here's the second one. The same player, Kanizia, going through. Doing well. Gets yeah. past the first hurdle, goes by the second hurdle, yeah. but no chance with this one. I think he'd have got sent off at Twickenham for that, saying, <laughs> let alone the World Cup. I think you've got to argue that. But the referees, I think, are going to overreact to this directive that's been given to them by uh -huh. FIFA to be strict. And it's going to look and put a lot of pressure on players, a lot of pressure on themselves. Uh -huh. And I'm just wondering whether the directive is not a little bit too strong. A couple of the things I, f I think is right about it, they've been told to keep the game flowing at free kicks, don't have players yeah. standing on the ball, which I think is right. Yeah. For players not to do a lapse of honour when they score, which again I think is right, yeah. let's get on with the game. So yeah. a couple of things I feel yeah, is right, but, but to be told that they might be out of the World Cup if they don't satisfy the authorities, I think yeah. is totally wrong. Too much pressure on them, as you much say. Much too much, yeah. Right, well, now the focus switches to tonight's action on ITV. Beginning at 7.35, you can see the hosts Italy live up against the team we've highlighted as being a potential surprise, Austria. Now, the game takes place in Rome's refurbished Olympic Stadium. And for an update on how the city is looking forward to the clash and indeed what the Italian reaction was to last night's big kickoff, here's our man in the eternal city. Gary Newborn. These are a selection of today's Italian newspapers and they're all crucifying Maradona. The Italian press, rather like their football supporters, do blow hot and cold all the while, but their criticisms of the world champions after the most sensational defeat for years in the World Cup is, of course, quite understandable. Let's have a look at some of the headlines. La Gazzetta della Sport, the most popular of the Italian newspapers, says Maradona KO'd, Maradona humiliated. Tuto Sport says Maradona ripped apart. And Corriello della Sport says Maradona risks elimination. And they also say Argentina really humiliated. Newspapers are one of the very few things that come cheap in Rome. The Eternal City is certainly cashing in on the World Cup finals. It's become rip-off city. 
Whether it's a restaurant, a bar or a shop, the chances are that you'll have to pay well over the top. Taxis seem to have a supplement for just about everything. One tried to charge me an extra three pounds just because he had a radio. Another doubled his prices after 10 o'clock at night. Some tourist areas are real money traps. The souvenir boys in the Pantheon Square really go to town with their plastic replicas. So 45 is 23 pounds. It was 17 as you saw me. England. Come from England. So you're now offering me cheaper than your friend now. So 30, 30, what's that? Okay, 15 give me 15 pounds. Right. 15 pounds? Yeah. Uh, can I have a think about it? Thanks. The restaurants are also keen to empty your wallet, but at least the sites here are free. Well, it's very pleasant. You're sitting here watching the world go by and all the beautiful people and having a nice cold beer. Mind you, this is five pounds a throw. There's a three pound cover charge just to sit here. I think though that football's gonna get in the way on this trip. Cheers. It's not really. Meanwhile, there's been an unexpected safety scare at Rome's Olympic Stadium where six World Cup matches, including the final, will be played. Italy's interior ministry claim it isn't safe, despite £80 million being spent on rebuilding the 85,000 all-seater stadium. They say the terracing is uneven and escape routes for the spectators are inadequate, but it's been agreed that the matches can go ahead if the necessary changes are made after the World Cup finishes. The Italian team had their first training session at the stadium yesterday. The major worry for Italy's manager, Vicini, in the opening match is Austria's success at set pieces, and he still has to decide the 11th spot for tonight's team. Two Juventus players are vying for that place up front, Salvatore Schilacci and Roberto Baggio. This is Baggio. He became the world's most expensive player when Juventus paid Fiorentina eight million pounds for him in the spring. I asked him if he had to prove his worth in the World Cup. Baggio says it's flattering to be valued at such a price, but he says he's still got to play well and score goals to justify the incredible fee. One thing is for sure, there'll be thousands of flags at the Olympic Stadium tonight. Italy is preparing to cheer on the team they believe will win the World Cup. But there is a country across the border who is preparing to spoil the party in Rome. Jerry Harrison has been finding out all about the Austrians. A few months ago, Tony Polster was an isolated figure in Austrian football. The Austrian fans didn't approve of him playing in Spain when the rest of the squad were with home base clubs. They said he was big and clumsy, they didn't like him, and the feeling was mutual. For the final qualifying game against East Germany, which Austria had to win, Polster was really fired up. He said he was playing for his country, but against the fans. And a hat-trick proved his point and put Austria into the finals with Polster the hero. But he was so incensed by his treatment, he refused to join in the lap of honour. Here in Italy, Polster, 33 goals for Seville this season, is keeping a low profile in an Austrian squad which has had a very impressive World Cup warm-up with victories over Spain and Holland, with another big goal scorer suddenly emerging at international level. Number 14, Gerhard Rodax, combining well with Polster here to set up the equaliser in Spain. And then, two minutes from the end, the no-hoper who scored 35 goals in Austrian football won the match like this. Apart from goalkeeper Klaus Lindenberger, who's 33, Austria is a young team, perhaps too young. Average age 24, only the Americans are younger. But they're also the tallest, with plenty of midfield players and defenders who can cause trouble in the air, which they certainly did against Holland recently in another impressive win. There's a word in German, the saint would know it, he speaks a foreign language anyway. It's Svecht Pessimismus, running yourself down, giving yourself no chance. It's the typical Austrian approach. Tony Polster isn't like that. That's why he's so successful in Spain and why he can do interviews in Italian saying he'll score against them tonight. The Austrians aren't too sure whether to stick with the old Schrecht pessimismus against Italy or go for Polster and his left foot. Well, James, uh, this is going to be quite a match this evening. I think it'll be a great game. It could be one of the best games of the lot.
very fascinating because the Ayatollahs won't want to, to, to lose a goal, will they? Well, they've always been slow starters, Italy, in yeah, all the World have, Cup tournaments yeah. that I've ever seen. They're very slow starters. Yeah. I think Austria have a great chance tonight to go at them and... and well. At home, they'll be panicking. As you say, they won't want to I'll lose tell you it. what, they're 12 to 1, and the old Roonies were 12 to 1 yesterday to beat yeah. Argentina. And Austria have got to be a better bet than, than Cameroon's, really. Yeah. So I, I think it'll be a fascinating game. Uh -huh. uh, it looks good. I mean, Polster will play. It looks as though Radox might be in the buff. I mean, Rodex <laughs> on the on bench. The bench. <laughs> yes. Sorry, yes. But, yeah. so, but the, as you know, they're my outside tip. Austria, I know they so. are. And a very good tip they are too, sir. It'll be very interesting to look at yes. that one tonight. Right, time for a quick break now. In part two, we have the answer to last weekend's schoolboy competition and another poser for you in which you can win £2,000. Well, also, we go live to the England camp in Sardinia to talk to Brian Robson, so stay with us. Happiness is a cigar called Hamlet, the mild cigar. <laughs> Only Heineken can do this. Funny how things turn out. I wanted to be a dancer, but Mother wouldn't hear of it. Nice girls aren't dancers. And then the war came, and there's me, a dispatch rider in the army. I could still strip a two-stroke engine. Anyway, nice girl that I was, I got married. 2nd of June, 43. Two days leave and a honeymoon in Huddersfield. Didn't impress Mother. Well, neither did Harry till we bought our own place, years later. Talk of things coming in threes. Harry had an accident at work. We got burgled, thank heavens for the insurance, and I was pregnant too. Kids. The other day, my grandson said to me, could a man ever be prime minister? Well, you never know, I said, but probably not in my lifetime. Guardian Royal Exchange. Life may let you down, our policies won't. Drum. Drum. Work. Work. Hard. Drum. High performance toiletries for men. 100 degrees Celsius. So it is water. Where'd it come from? Well, that's the next thing for all you to work out. In 1964, Clive James went up to Cambridge. In this Sunday's Observer, he's going back. Welcome back to the ITV World Cup studio. Don't forget, we have another competition for you shortly, but first we're going to concentrate on the home nation's part in this year's tournament. England's first match against the Republic of Ireland is one you can watch live on this channel. That's on Monday, kick-off at 8 o'clock. The England squad have been in their Sardinia base now for 15 days, while the Irish arrived in Calgary just last night. Now, we can now call on England skipper Brian Robson. Good afternoon, Brian. Brian, Hi, Ian. Hi, right, Jim. Mate? What was your reaction to the game last night, Brian? Um, delighted, really. All the lads were very pleased with that result. Um, because I think to start the competition like that, it just proves that no matter which team you're playing against, it's going to be a hard game. What about the referee? Did you see that as being a potential danger to players like yourself who like to get tucked in a bit? <laughs> well, we've all been warned that uh, referees are going to clamp down. And uh, that's exactly what the referee did during that game. Um, I thought the first sending off was very harsh. 
Um, the second one, I think he was probably justified in sending the lad off. Yeah, I would have thought so. Now, you could actually, depending on where you qualify, meet Cameroons now, couldn't you? Because the Argies could go out. Do you fancy that? No, I don't fancy playing against Cameroon after what I saw last night. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> no, it, I mean, at this stage, the, uh, the main thing is for us to qualify. And we know we've got uh, three tough games coming up against the Republic, Holland and Egypt. Um, and we've got to concentrate on them. And at the end of the day, you can't plan on who you're going to play against or anything like that. You've just got to make sure you qualify and you take whoever comes. Now, your own fitness, Brian, uh, you must be delighted that you're going into this World Cup. Uh, not the way you went into the Mexico one. Really fit. You've had a good rest throughout the season. Yeah, a lot of people have said to me that uh, when I had the hernia operation, it gave me a good rest uh, in the season. And now I'm feeling uh, fine. I'm feeling 100%. Uh, my fitness feels good. I'm just looking forward to the game starting. Do you know the team? Uh, has the manager told you the team yet? No, the boss hasn't told us the team yet, uh, Ian. He said he's not going to name the side. And, well, we'll probably hear it tomorrow, but he's not going to name it until about an hour before the kickoff. We're doesn't want to give Jack Charlton any uh, favours. Yeah. We assume you'll be in it, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly hope so, Jim. Yeah. yeah. Have you had any contact with England supporters while you've been out there, Brian? No, we just heard that uh, last night, uh, the first time there was a bit of trouble, um, 14 people were arrested for a bit of fracas outside of a bar. Um, we heard that some Swedish journalists had uh, set the supporters up by buying them drinks and uh, there was cameramen there to get it, but uh, I don't think the police have um, charged any, anybody with anything serious, but that, that's the only bit of trouble I've heard of so far. Oh, Hopefully it'll stay, stay at that now. Yeah, sure. So you're down to the stadium today? Yes, we've, all the players have got to go down and get the accreditations to allow us to get into the ground to play the match. <laughs> and then. Uh, we're going on then to um, to the pitch uh, to train tonight. Okay. Oh, cheers. Good luck, Brian. Good luck, Brian. Thanks for talking to us, mate. Thanks very much, both. Cheers, pal. So, now what about England's first opponents, the Republic of Ireland? Well, Tony Francis is our man following Jack Charlton's men around, and here's his up-to-date report. No fanfare, no fuss, just a stroll up the lane for the Irish lads who'll be trying to unwind between now and Monday night. They haven't been used to this sort of attention in Malta, which is precisely why Jack Charlton kept his squad there until the last moment. Now he's in Italy, he loves it. Lovely here, isn't it? Smashing. I like places by the sea. <laughs> I can sit and look at the sea all day. <laughs> That's very nice here. The players were on the beach in no time. In fact, it was like home from home for Arsenal's David O'Leary. Well, I've holidayed here for the last uh, four years, coming back in July for another few weeks. Hopefully, uh, it's had a happy times here, and hopefully it'll continue to, starting from Monday onwards. Now. The Irish Hotel is only three miles down the beach from England's headquarters, a prospect which didn't exactly delight the Sardinian police. I don't know why. I mean, it's pretty secure. This is only one road in and one road out. And it's, uh, you can't get in either in the either beach, apparently. The England are about five miles down the road. I think it was just that they got in first, England, when they, were, when they had the advantage of knowing that they were going to be here and got everything sorted out and then we had to take second bits, which we're not really keen on. And then when we get told we can't even have the second bits, we dig our heels in a little bit. While English fans were reported to be running a mock 30 miles away in Cagliari, Jack was in his element, quietly plotting England's downfall and hoping for his own net fall. Well, I think that Big Jack's probably just worried about how many he would have caught if it had been out there. I don't think he'd be worried about the World Cup at all. And Robson is resigned to winning the World Cup. Well, very did smart. Did you get that one? Yeah, very smart. Get it? Yeah, oh, right. But Big Jack has taken his team uh, to Italy late. Now, I think that's not a bad idea. Oh, good idea, Ian. Good idea. I think you can go to all these venues too early. I think Jack, Jack's play. They talk about Jack. Jack's a true pro. Oh, you know that. Yes. He's, he's done everything right. He's a shreddy. An old shreddy. Right, well, now to Scotland and their opening game against Costa Rica. Well, it's also live on ITV. That kicks off on Monday at 4 o'clock. Here's Eleven is with the Scottish squad in their camp near Genoa. And they gather Greavesy that we're about to get a bit of no, stick in a report. No, not us. In the heart of the Scottish camp, you'll find an Englishman, Yorkshire-born Alan Hodgkinson.
The former Sheffield United and England goalkeeper puts his Scottish counterparts through their specialised paces, all the while determined to dispel the myth of the inept Scottish goalie. The, the Scottish goalkeeper has been pilloried right from the Frank Affey days, uh, right through to Alan Ruff. There was nobody got more criticism than Alan Ruff. And there's a boy, a chap there, who had a wonderful Scotland career of 50-odd caps. And now Jim Layton, 50-odd caps as well as beat that record. Now, goalkeepers are not that bad if they play for the country 50-odd times. I mean, there's quite a few England goalkeepers who've never had a cap who would give the right arm to achieve that. Uh, Rivalry for the number one Scottish spot has been intensified in recent weeks. The Bernians' Andy Gorham is pushing his great friend Jim Leighton hard. Leighton, now with 55 caps, has been through a harrowing time since being dropped by Manchester United from the FA Cup final replay. Jim Leighton is a, a super guy, a super worker. And I, I'm sure that uh, people like Neville Southall, like Peter Shilton, they, they all make mistakes, but we're looking for a little bit of fairness all round. Let's have a little bit of fairness all round. Hodgkinson, though, has so much confidence in his squad that he has a suggestion for our own Mr Greaves, who, as we all know, is never one to mince his words as far as Scottish goalkeepers are concerned. Make no mistake, we're all, all three goalkeepers are battling for the place against Costa Rica. And if I could send a message to my friend, Mr Jimmy Greaves, why doesn't he come up here and meet the Scottish goalkeepers face to face and just tell him from me. That will be very gentle with him and uh, probably we'll throw him in the sea, but uh, we'll be very, very gentle. And I think it's about time he came up and see. I'll pay his fare, tell him. But that's only a joke. He's got more money than me. <laughs> <laughs> God dear, OG. Now, I was with OG in 62 World Cup in Chile. Yes. Uh, we're big buddies. And him talking about paying my fare. He's a Yorkshire man. No yeah. chance, is he? No he paying my fare. And, <laughs> and I'll tell you what, you weren't too impressed with Frank Affey, was you, when, well, when, when we beat you 9 3 at Wembley? But still, I. I we didn't have a go, actually. We didn't. It wasn't us that had a go at Scottish goalkeepers it was, it was the Emily, other night. It was that Emily. Emily News. <laughs> now, it was Emily News that had a go. It was. I mean, I defend him. You've, in fact, you said that Jim Layton had killed for all time the, the Scottish I, jokes. I did indeed. And actually, I felt nobody felt more sorry for Jim Layton in the cup final than me. I thought it was a disgrace what happened to him. But ending on Odge's note about that any goalkeeper would give his right arm to play for Scotland. <laughs> Oji, I think that's got to go in the old Coleman balls. That, <laughs> that, that, that will get a mention for all time. That's a cracker. <laughs> well done, Alan Hodgkinson. Keep the lads at it, pal. All I would say is I think some of our goalkeepers did give the right arm. <laughs> OK, now it's competition time. And before we set this week's poser, we'll reveal the answer to last week's quiz. The top prize was a full set of the 23 official Football League videos, one for each First Division club, plus three specials, and ten runners-up prizes of the video of your choice. Now, first, the answers. Three youngsters scoring in an England-Scotland schoolboy international ten years ago and we ask you to identify the three goal scorers. And this is uh, goal number one, and uh, none other than Paul McStay. And let's hope that Paul gets one like that come Monday, Jim. He'd be happy with that, wouldn't he? Yes. Not one in like that. Now, this goal, I thought, might be a little bit of a test. This was Ali Dick, who played on the left wing That's for Scotland. Right. Ali, who went to Tottenham. Yes. And I don't know what's happened to Ali now. None of us seem to know. Now, this was a beauty. This was a great goal. A goal to remember by a player whose name I forget at the moment. No, it's Paul Rideout. Yeah. There you are. Paul Rideout scoring there. Well, our top prize winner is Andrew Lawrence of Brookfield Road, Edmonton, North London. And the ten runners up are as follows. Mr. C. Smith and Battersea. There you go. Gary Farmer. And funny enough, Jim, we had a lot of Scots who, who wrote in. Well, you had two Scotsmen scoring goals, say, so, didn't yes. you? Well, so, I mean, yeah. you know, they, they recognised them, obviously. Okay, but congratulations but... to them. Videos are on the way, chaps. All right. Now, for the first of our series of World Cup competition. And this week, we want you to select the top three goals from the 1986 Mexico World Cup. The prize on offer is £2,000 in cash. So pay attention no closely things. as we give you six goals to choose from. Goal A, Diego Maradona's legal effort against England in the quarter-final. And he's hurting England again here. It's a brilliant run. It's one of the World Cup great goals. Goal B is by Manuel Negretti for Mexico against Bulgaria. Still Mexico with Negretti. 
And uh, De Gretchen again! Magnificent goal! Goal C, England's own Gary Lineker, his first goal against Poland. The third player involved is Trevor Stephen, and it's Gary Stevens. Lineker! Goal D, the wizardry of Michael Loudrop against Uruguay. Loudrop seems to ghost past the defenders as though they don't exist. This is going to be one of the goals of the tournament. Magnificent! The boys are genius. Goal E, Igor Belanov for the Soviet Union against Belgium. Savarov, Belanov going forward. This is Belanov. Might open up here for him. And finally, goal F is Diego Maradona again for Argentina against Belgium. Get it, the defender. Maybe their chances in this one against Maradona as one in ten. And here's Maradona now. Assist number two. Oh, brilliant. So let's recap. Goal A, Diego Maradona against England. Goal B, Negretti. Goal C, Gary Lineker. Goal D, Laudrup. Goal E, Belenov. Goal F, Diego Maradona again against Belgium. So if you fancy a crack at the £2,000 prize, here's how to enter. Select your top three in order and then ring this number, 0898-9090. Leave the letters of the top three goals in order together with your name and your telephone number. The call will cost you 25p per minute, cheap rate, or 38p per minute at other times. The number again, 0898-9090. Alternatively, if you want to enter by post, you can do so by putting your selection on a postcard and sending it to ITV World Cup Mexico Goals Competition, London Weekend Television, London, SE 996YW. So, good luck. The result and another competition will be on next Saturday's show. Are we picking that? Eh? Are we picking the winners? We are picking the winners, oh, In yeah. that case, we'll split the difference and get <laughs> split a grand apiece. Yeah. Now, just one story, Jim, that's in the headlines, the Swindon Town fiasco, yes. where they've been put from the first division now back into the third division. That's right. Now, I mean, they had this wonderful day out at Wembley when they won, rightly so, to get a place in the first division. And well, because of illegal payments by the club yes. to the players, uh, mm. they've been relegated to the third. It is my humble opinion, Ian, that this is the most disgraceful decision ever in the history of our domestic game. Because what has been levied at Swindon Town, I am pretty certain, could be levied at three quarters of the Football League clubs and therefore you would have a di <laughs> third division of about 70 clubs yeah. and none in the first and the second. I think it was obviously a revenue affair, mm. illegal of payments, I mean it's got nothing to do yeah. with the breaking of rules as I see it, as they've not done anything wrong. That's right, so I mean, really had the Inland Revenue done their bit and that would nothing to do with the football, they'd still be in well, the first well, division. Well, that's how I see it, and I don't see how the league can get involved in this, and the decision they've made is totally <laughs> disgraceful. That's it. OK, well, that's it for now. Before we go, let me just recap the World Cup coverage coming your way on ITV in the next few days. Tonight at 7.35, there's a whole Italy against Austria live from a frenzied Olympic Stadium in Rome. Tomorrow, 3.30, there's a USA against Czechoslovakia, that one in Florence. And then on Monday afternoon, Scotland's opening game against Costa Rica. We're on the air at 3.25. And then England against the Republic of Ireland at Monday evening at 7.35. All those games live on ITV. OK, Jim and I will be together again at the same time next Saturday. I hope you'll be able to join us then. Enjoy the football. See you Goodbye. next week. Bye-bye for now.